Scene 97, take one. My name is Ed Glenn Denning, and I am originally from Philadelphia. I came to Los Angeles to go to Art Center. While at Art Center, I met a teacher who had a loft in downtown LA. David Mikarski was his name. And I came down to shoot a portrait of my teacher. And I saw this incredible loft in Citizens Warehouse where he lived. And I said, if you are ever moving out of here, I will take this. And he had found a larger space in the brewery. And he allowed me to move into his space in Citizens Warehouse. It was 1981. I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a painter or a sculptor. And that's what attracted me to photographing artists. After I delivered a portrait, an artist would say to me, wow, it's a great picture of me. Can you take pictures of my paintings? Can you take pictures of my sculptures? And so I became a fine art documentary photographer and at this time worked for artists and for galleries and for museums, shooting catalogs or invitation photos. And that's what became my career. That's what I'm currently working on. <laughs> there you go. The community within Citizens Warehouse was kind of like a college fraternity. Now remember, I was a college student, so I was going through undergraduate, but my friends were mostly a little bit older than I and were individuals that had gotten their masters and were therefore starting their art careers. The space allowed them to, to make large paintings, to make large sculpture. There wasn't anyone there but us artists, and so we were kind of down there all alone. The movie crews would come down to shoot TV shows. Needless to say, there was a fair amount of fun to be had. We had Al's Bar where we could go play pool or listen to music. It was a blast. It was a blast. I can't think of a time in my life when I had so much fun as in those first years. The art dock was where Carl Davis lived, and he built a wall behind the loading dock, about five, six, seven feet from the door. And then painters would put paintings on the wall. Other artists would make installations within this space. And on the weekend, and when Carl was there, he would leave the door open and people could just drive by and check out the art show. And it was a wonderful idea and it gave exposure to a lot of artists who were not yet able to be picked up by a gallery. I photographed different shows that Carl had at the art dock. We were all trying to promote ourselves in those days. And so the art doc would have been a device to publicize artists from the neighborhood. Well, I remember the American Hotel and Al's Bar being the center of downtown. It was the focus where everyone went to. People from Hollywood, people from all over LA would come to. So for us, living in kind of isolated warehouses in different parts of Los Angeles, this was the place where we'd all go meet, where we'd all go play pool, where we'd all go have a drink, where we'd meet with our friends. Everybody knew each other fairly well because there weren't that many of us. Jet Jackson was and is a, a good friend of mine. I had started a series of portraits of artists and I had always loved her style of painting. And so she was one of the first persons who took me to her room and we shot a picture up there in her tiny cramped little room that was filled salon style with a million pieces in it. I remember a man named uh, Don Jones who used to be a train conductor and used to run the train from LA to New Orleans. I'd sometimes go up to his room and we'd just tell stories about where we'd been in the world. Just very interesting man. Joel Bloom was from Chicago and you could hear it every time you heard him speak. He was kind of a tough man. I remember going in there once and he didn't have toilet paper and it's like, Joel, what do you mean? And he said, just get out of here. You don't have to ever come back. He was a gruff individual. But boy, did we so much needed that store. He was a great man and he is missed. The artist made this an arts district. 
The artists are the ones that are always finding the old funky neighborhoods and transforming them. We were here first. We were making the big sloppy paintings. We were taking pictures. It felt like it was our world when I lived down here in the 80s. When I was going to Art Center and I would tell students like myself <laughs> where I lived, and they'd say, oh my goodness, that's scary. People were scared of coming down here. There were art galleries that came down here early 80s. They were down here for about two weeks and the galleries just said, sorry, this isn't gonna work, we're out of here. But the TV show Hill Street Blues was very popular and they asked me if I could rent my studio to them for a couple days and people working on the Hill Street Blues show were just so enamored by these spaces. They're going, oh my gosh, I live in a tiny apartment in Hollywood. How can I move down here? You pay only what? You could just feel, oh my goodness, they're all going to move down here. And I moved out and moved to Mount Washington. Since then, the whole world has moved down here. It seems that the commercial world has moved down, an architectural school has moved down, and there are just a lot more people down here. It's a city. There's been a new generation that are not scared of the urban experience. So they're just coming down here in droves because the space is so nice. The restaurants are finally here. It's gone through a big change. Cut.